In the previous video, we discussed the relevant anatomy and physiology of the platysma muscle. In this video, we're going to talk about how you strengthen that muscle. And the main way you do it is isometric strengthening. And you can actually see that contraction shown over here in the image on the right. Now, a relevant question is, why would you want to strengthen the platysma? And here's some reasons. Number one, protection for the jugular veins. Think back to the previous video. During high-intensity exercise, where you have intense respiratory effort, there is a tendency for the jugular veins to become partially compressed. And that's because of all the muscle contractions that are going on in the neck, the expansion of the thorax due to expansion of the lungs, etc. And obviously we don't want the jugular veins to be compressed because they bring blood back from the head down to the thorax, so they influence venous return. Okay? And so it's noted that during this high-intensity exercise, we actually see people have flaring out or contraction of the platysma, and it's thought to protect the jugular veins. So if you have somebody that might have some compression of those, it might be worth your while to train them to isometrically strengthen their platysma muscle. Number two is purely aesthetic, increasing muscle tone in the anterior neck. So some people will have this obtuse cervical mental angle here due to the skin right here that kind of hangs there. And that skin can hang there partially due to weakness of the platysma muscle. And so maybe this is a more desirable cervical mental angle. And so if you isometrically strengthen the platysma, it can help to tone up some of the skin in the neck. Again, there's no danger of having this excess skin right here, but again, some people might want to get rid of that. And so one way to do that without surgery is to strengthen the platysma. And number three, protection against a rear naked choke. You can see the guy in purple here delivering a rear naked choke to his opponent in white. This is a maneuver done in jiu-jitsu or anything involving jiu-jitsu like MMA. And contrary to popular belief, you're not actually cutting off the person's air supply. You're actually compressing the carotid arteries. And those are arteries that deliver blood to the brain. And if you compress those arteries hard enough and for long enough, the person blacks out. Why? Because they're not getting blood to their brain. So how can a strong contracted platysma help defend against a rear naked choke? Well, first of all, if your opponent has their arm really tightly cinched around your neck, it's probably not going to help. But if they maybe have 70, 80% of a full tight cinch of their arm around your neck, it might buy you 10 to 15 seconds. So what I want you to do is put your fingers just above your clavicle, about the middle of your clavicle, with your neck at rest you can feel the tissue there, right? Now maximally contract your platysma. You can feel there that there's now some increased space between the surface of your skin and the deeper structures. That's actually the mechanism by how uh, it helps relieve compression on the jugular veins. Now the carotid arteries are deeper, so what you're essentially doing is you're increasing the space between the surface of your skin, and so your opponent's arm, and the carotid arteries and combined with some defense with your hands, etc., it might buy you some extra time to get out of the chokehold. It is not an absolute defense, but it can help you get out of the position by giving you a longer period of time to get out of the position. Now, strengthening the platysma, as I mentioned before, is going to be done isometrically. So the dosage is going to be contract for five seconds and then relax for five seconds, and then just repeat this over and over again. You might try this 10 to 15 times. So it'll look something like this. So here's the contraction, hold that for five seconds, and then you'll relax that for five seconds. Obviously this right here is just a simple isometric platysma contraction with the head and neck in neutral. But you can combine this with cervical extension. So isometrically contract the platysma, and while you're holding that platysma contraction, you can move in various neck motions. So then relax for five seconds, then build it up again. Isometric platysma contraction plus cervical extension. You can do the same thing with cervical side bending. So isometrically contract the platysma, and there is left side bending. Relax 
isometric platysma contraction plus side bending in the opposite direction. You can do the same thing with cervical rotation. Now, one other note here on strengthening the platysma. I use the term strengthening very loosely. Unless you have a pre-existing weakness in this muscle that's pretty significant, don't expect to have any significant strength gains of the platysma. What you're more likely to have are endurance gains because this is mostly type 1 muscle fibers. It's not going to have a lot of absolute strength. What it is more for is endurance. So if you've never strengthened the platysma before, and you go through 10 of these cycles right here of contracting five seconds, relaxing five seconds, you might find that by the 10th cycle, your platysma contraction strength is much less than it was on the first contraction. That means you've got some endurance deficits. And so by doing this over and over again, you'll build up the endurance of that muscle. If you already have significant weakness, then you will get some strength gains and some endurance gains along the way. Thank you for all your support. Be sure to check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.